Hello friends. Um, I am here for another unboxing video. I'm going to unbox some packages that have come in for the shop for the last week. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. I have a box that's about, or a pile that's like up here. I can't lift them. They're too heavy. Um, so I have packages from three designers and then I have a big box from Moda. It's my first um, order from Moda. It is not fabric though. It's notions, um, so I think it could possibly be boring <laughs> um, for most of you. So I will save that one to last, and we'll go through the cross-stitch designs first, because I feel like those are the most fun to look through. Thanks for joining me. It's always more fun to open packages with you guys here with me. Get this one open. Make sure I don't accidentally cut through any merchandise. All right. So this pack, first package is from uh, Quaint Rose Needle Arts. These are her newest designs, they're very cute, and I thought I would order them for the shop. So first one is Percy Penguin, that's really awesome, that's a big one. Um, this one is Stitch and Be Merry, you can see her latest video, she shows these um, up close. And she does a lot of fun things with combining fabrics. And lastly, Peppermint Urn. She had an October urn that was really pretty. And this goes along with that. This is the next one in the series. So those are beautiful Quaint Rose Needle Arts. I'll be adding those to the shop. Okay, the next one, get the invoice there. The next one is a box from Threadwork Primitives. Okay, um, I have to open this one up. All right, so I think I had to restock quite a bit. Uh, Beggar's Night, I've stitched this one, I love it. This is part of a series. Oh, don't look at my fingernails, they are in bad shape. Oof. Oh, this is our new release, Christmas Duo. Those are super cute little pin pillows. Oh, those look good. Doble. I got a bunch of those. Yay. Um, this is one of my favorites. Christmas Fruit Basket. And I still haven't stitched that yet, but I want to. It's in Gentle Arts. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this is a new one in the shop. I've always thought this was so cute. Cottage Charm Sampler. Just a cute little small. Okay, I should that. Edgar's Manor. Falling Snow Sampler. That is so cute. Give Thanks. Jack in the Hat. Stitch that one too. And lastly, Tombstone Pin Keep. Oops. There you go. So obviously some of those I sold out for around the Halloween, Octo Dark October stitching sale, and I wanted to make sure I got them back in stock. And then I wanted to have some of the Christmas and winter ones in stock for December. So happy to have those, and I love that she came out with a new design. So that's exciting. All right, so the next box is from Stacy Nash. Very excited for this. Be adding some that were not in my shop previously. Um, I have been a long time big fan of Stacy Nash and her designs, um, and I wasn't carrying her yet. Um, and then at Needlework Marketplace, she came out with a few designs, and so I started carrying those. And I've picked up a few at Hoffman, but this is my first time getting an order directly from her. So it took a little longer than expected. So um, some of these I was stocking for Dark October and didn't get here in time, but that's okay. Um, I'm just excited to have all of these. And I mean, I know I stitch them year round. So 
Um, and I'm sure there's ones you've seen in here before, but um, you know, since my shop is kind of curation of my favorites, um, that's the way I go when I'm ordering. Um, and this is the first order. When I finally get to add a designer that I want to add, I I don't get to add all their designs. I just don't have the, the money or the space to do that all at once. So I kind of try to grow over time. So at, that's to say this is my first official Stacey Nash order. So Butternut Tavern Pin Keep. I have had this one kitted for so long and still have not stitched it. Um, but I think this is so beautiful. It's a pin keep, but it's fairly big. I would frame this if I stitched it, I think. This is Jack's House Pin Keep. Actually, let me show you my stitch of this. I changed it up so it's a little more fall than Halloween. I'm going to show it at the end. So I don't disrupt the flow. I'll keep that one out as a reminder. This is a great one. Cherry Hollow Sampler. This is another one I've kitted and haven't stitched yet. Old White Farmhouse Sampler. That one is enabled by Emily C, as usual. Oh, this is another one I have kids. Oh my God. <laughs> this is Tomato Harvest Sewing Bag. I need to get to work. I just think it's so pretty and I love it on a blue fabric. Maybe in the spring, summertime. All right. Halloween at Hollyberry. Let's also say Hollyberry Farm. It says Hollyberry Sampler. That's right there. That was one of my favorite stitches. So I admit I sometimes think about restitching it on a darker fabric, but I love it. It's a beautiful one. I was already carrying this one, um, but I got more Merry Halloween pin keeps. She just re-released these recently. I've shown them before. I've stitched these. This one is like my one of my bucket list stitches. Blackwater Hollow Sampler. I just love this. This is so beautiful. And I've seen a lot of you out there stitch it. And I want to join in. This is Maria Higginson Sampler. Remember Emily showed this recently. I believe um, that this was released in parts as a maybe the Country Sampler Club. And that now it's been released, the full thing. Um, it's just a huge house. And I love it. Um, these are all Weeks Dye Works. This is another one I've wanted to stitch for years. This is Miss Baxter's House Sampler. I think that's so cute. I love the striped house with the beehive and the flowers. That's an awesome one. Um, that's part of the Houses of Buried Chapel Road series, which I don't know if there's more than two. If you know of more that I'm missing, uh, please let me know. But this is the other one, um, Turkey Hollow Farm, which I know you've seen many people stitch probably. Um, and I would love to stitch that one one day too. I know I have some of my friends have stitched this one, Martha Agnes Sewing Roll. I have this in my stash, but I wanted it in the shop too. It says, my time is swiftly passing by, my day of death is drawing nigh, those youthful hands I now employ, worms of dust will soon destroy. Oh, Martha. Oh, Martha, I love the melodrama. And that, my friends, is the last one in this package. So, that was exciting. Um, yeah, I love those and I am definitely looking forward to adding them to uh, my shop and to being enabled every time someone buys one. <laughs> That's what happens. Every time I see you send another one out, I'm like, oh, I want to stitch that too. So those are all of my de the design cross-stitch designs um, that I received since my last unboxing. I know I have one, one more on its way that I'm excited about and I think it's coming soon. So I will have that in a separate video, probably in a Vlogmas video because tomorrow's December 1st. Um, and I think I'm going to do vlogmas. I think I'll do like I did dark October stitching, probably do a video every, you know, five to seven days and I'll include unboxings in those if you're interested in unboxings. So, but now I'm going to do the Moda one. 
So I'm excited about this, but again, it might not be the most exciting thing because it's sewing notions, but I thought I'd show you guys anyway because I'm kind of new to this. Um, I've never like put in an order like this before, so I thought it might be interesting for some of you to see. So let me try to pick up this box. Hold on. Oh God. <laughs> so it's a big box. Um, so the way this works is that I don't have, um, I don't have the cred to open, uh, an account with Moda for my shop. So I don't have, um, because I'm on Etsy, I, that's just what happens because of Etsy, I, um, because I don't have my own website, you need your own website, you need to be selling a certain amount, um, of products and I just don't fit the bill. So what they let me do is open a, use a house account. So when I order, I have to order a, um, I have a, like a pretty high minimum. So I really have to, I can't just put an order here and there when I run out of something. I have to try to figure out like, what am I going to order to hit that minimum, but not buy too much stuff. So this is a little nerve wracking. This one has been, this is an experiment. Um, so, you know, it's an investment and we'll see how it goes. It could not work out and then so be it, but um, I thought it was worth a try. So basically what I decided to invest in were supplies that I use um, for my hand applique and also um, a couple things that I use for hand quilting um, so that, you know, when I'm showing how to do things or talking about how I do things, I can say, you know, you can find these tools in my shop. Um, now I've just started carrying the AppliClick tools and so some of these things I think work well. Well, I use the AppliClick tools for hand applique. These are other things I use for hand applique. So I'd like to be able to say like, you can buy them all in one spot basically, um, rather than having to shop at a bunch of different spots. So that's the thinking. Um, that being said, I have never carried products like this before, so I don't know how they're gonna sell. And um, there's plenty of other people that sell them. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so it wasn't easy to decide how much to carry, how much to buy of each, but I've just done my best and we'll see how it goes. How many times have I said that? So, um, one of the key things that I use in my hand applique and when I'm doing hand quilting are thimble pads. So, I have a lot. Um, so when I put in my order, because they wouldn't let me open a normal account, I couldn't access things, information on the website that others can. Like I couldn't see the pricing and I couldn't see um, how many you have to buy at a time. So it ends up that all of these different things come in like boxes or sets or minimums or quantities you have to purchase in. So the lady on the phone had to tell me for each one and I had a rough idea of how many I wanted. Um, so anyway, I bought a bunch of thimble pads. So I'll be selling those. Um, I basically what thimble pads are, it's made out of real leather and they stick on your finger. So instead of wearing a full thimble, you're just using the point. Um, I've tried a variety of different thimbles when I'm doing, um, you know, hand stitching and, um, none of them fit right. And they just, they were too awkward for me. Um, and I tried these ones and they worked perfect. Um, so the problem is they're, you know, disposable. So you don't, it's not like you have one thimble and you just use that all the time, but they do work, um, multiple times. So usually I'll, I'll do my hand stitching and then I will save, I'll put it with the tools and I'll reuse it until it's not sticky anymore. Um, and then you can buy, I think, special reusable sticky stuff. I don't know, but, um, I, I find a package lasts me, um, quite a long time. So that's what I use for, for thimbles. So I bought those. I got a lot of mechanical pencils for fabric. So they're in these packages, but it's a Soline fabric pencil. Um, here's mine. I use this a lot. Um, this is meant to write on fabric um, and it comes with an eraser, but I don't, I don't know about that part. Um, I erase when I write on, if I use this on paper, but um, on the fabric, it's a little hard. I don't, I don't quite understand that one, but you know, please feel free to correct me and tell me that it works like a miracle for you. But for me, what I use it for, I use this on my Applique, my Appliquick paper. It works great on that, but I'll also use it on fabric if I need to. Um, I just won't use it where I need it to disappear. I will use it where you can't see it. Um, and then I will also use it on paper. So it's kind of a multifunction 
mechanical pencil that I love, so I bought these for the shop um, because that's probably what I'll recommend to people for writing on the app, the quick paper. So you can use anything. You could also use a fine um, fine tip sharpie works well too, but um, that will lead lead through to the template behind it. So I use these um, in case I'm working for a book or something. Oh my goodness. They gave me a free little paper pad, which is nice. I guess I don't really need this. <laughs> Okay, so primitive needle, no, primitive gathering needles. Um, I bought these. I love these. These are the, um, let's see which ones did I get? I purchased, oh, these are the big stitch quilting ones. I use these all the time. I have some sitting over there. Um, buy, they get to buy them in packages at 12. I mean, they'll sell them in the individual. Um, individual pieces, they, how many, there's, there's 12 needles per tube. Um, I have been working off the same tube ever since I started Big Stitch Quilting. Um, they're really durable. These things are durable. They're strong. They're kind of the perfect length and thickness. Um, you don't want to stab yourself with them. They're like a sword. <laughs> but um, I just think these are, the, these are the highest quality I've come across. And um, I wanted to carry them in the shop. And then I also purchased the um, the binding needles. I use these when I'm hand binding my quilts, and I love them too. Um, again, like I think like one tube is going to get you a very very long way, um, and so I wanted to carry those as well. So I'm excited about that. Oh, I got a lot of let's see. Oh, I bought the lead to go in those pencils. I didn't realize that they came with an extra lead. So. These will be in the shop for a while. Uh, okay, the Roxanne glue. So this is like so key to me when I do my applique. Um, so this is the small size, the 0.5 ounce bottle. Um, and then I'm also carrying the two ounce bottle. I bought a lot of these too because So here's the two ounce bottle and then it comes with like a different cap with a fine tip. So this is a water soluble fabric glue. Um, so you, you know, it'll wash out. So you wouldn't use this, um, you know, to glue fabric that you want to stay together for a long time. Um, but this is very helpful when you're gluing down your applique pieces. Um, you could also use it, I know some people use it to glue down their binding when they're sewing it. I don't, I haven't tried that. Um, but this stuff to me is invaluable. You can also use it um, if you're like uh, finishing a cross stitch piece that you want to put trim around, like a pin cushion. Um, you can use this to temporarily temporarily glue it down. But I will say you're probably not going to wash that eventually, so it's not going to wash out. So you don't want to go too heavy handed on it. Um, but yeah, so I love this stuff. Um, so I wanted to carry that in the shop for anyone who wants to use it for hand applique. Oh, and then I got a bunch of bias tape makers. Um, when I'm making, I, I, I do this a lot with, um, I've come across it a lot in Blackbird Designs patterns um, for hand applique. They do a lot of like, use a bias tape maker to make um, a bias for stems, like um, bird legs, stuff like that. Um, and they usually, they'll always either use a quarter inch or half inch um, bias tape maker. And so I bought some of those clover bias tape makers. Um, there are other methods out there for making stems and whatnot um, in hand applique. I've seen a few. Um, this has just been, actually I've tried a couple too. This is just my favorite way is to use the bias tape maker. So I figured I would carry that as well. Um, looking for my needles, those are key. Okay, so these are the applique needles that I like to use. These are from Clover, and they're called black gold needles. They're applique sharps, number 12. So that's what I use, um, and I love those. So I'm gonna be carrying those. Um, but then I also got an alternative, um, because the head on these needles is so small. So these are ones that I learned of through um, the pink. Um, if you ever, if you haven't seen it, she has um, a three-part video series on the Fat Quarter Shop um, where she teaches you how to, how she does um, English paper piecing. It is amazing. She's an amazing teacher. And um, these are the needles that she uses. 
and they're called big eye needles. They're from Tulip. Um, the eye is not gigantic, but it's bigger than, I guess, what's normal, which is, which helps a little bit, um, but it's still, it's a, still a small eye. Um, but these are, I use these um, for English paper piecing, since she recommends them. So you, you could also use these for applique. Um, they're applique needles. So I thought I would try carrying those as well. They're a really nice quality. And um, again, they go a long way. It's not like you have to replace them all the time. So those are all the needles. Um, I got some applique pins because I use those. I always have those right here. I just, um, when you want to hold something in place with applique, I use the glue too. Um, but I'll also use the, the pins. They're just handy. These nice little packages of applique pins. They're shorter, um, which makes them more fitted for applique than your normal pins. Okay. All right, and then I think the last thing is thread. So um, for hand applique, I always use 80 weight or a filled thread. That's my preference. So I thought I would carry some in the shop. Um, that was the hardest thing to pick out because of the colors. There's so many colors and you have to buy them in packs of 10. I couldn't just buy a ton of colors because then I, you know, it's a lot of thread, they're not cheap. So this is what they look like. Um, so I think I started with a bunch of neutrals and maybe like one red. Um, I had planned to buy more colors, but I didn't realize I had to be in packs of 10, so. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they're all neutrals. But that's mostly what I use. So, um, so yeah. Again, they just this is a wooden spools. Um, Orfil has like different colored spool based on um, the weight of the thread. Um, so eighty weight always gets the wooden spool. Um, again, little goes a long way. This lasts a long time, and um, it's just a cotton thread, and it's it's thinner, so that you don't really see the stitches. Um, you can use whatever thread you want, but I I do prefer the eighty weight cotton. So I think that's it guys. I have a lot of work to do to get these things posted in the shop. I need to make sure of descriptions and pictures, though I think I can take a lot of that from the Moda website for these things. Um, and yeah, I just need to, to get it all figured out and see how it goes. Um, I hope that that was at least somewhat interesting. And I hope that uh, wherever, whenever you're watching this, you're doing well and are ready for uh, December. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Thank you.